So for those of you who like care, it's a house update right now, not the whole video, just, you know, right now. For those of you who don't care, sorry, this is what we do around here. And uh, I kind of have to explain all of the banging and all the things that you've undoubtedly been hearing in the background for the past couple weeks. Construction is in full force. We have everything ripped out of the downstairs, all of the old wall and all of the old, everything is gone. New walls have been put up, new electrical, new HVAC, new plumbing, new sprinkler system. It's all in and ready to go and our inspector is coming in the next few days to sign off so we can move on to the next step, which is hanging the drywall, kitchen, putting in the floors. But right now we're doing some extra bang banging because there's always something that has to be done. Even when you think you're finished, you move on to the next thing. So house is coming along very nicely and I'm very excited because I'm looking forward to having a kitchen again, for sure. I am going to tell you what the video is actually about in just a minute, but before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 104 of 365 days of soap. And we are continuing on with the Animal Crossings theme and testing Midwest Fragrance Company's scents because I've never worked with them before. And I was interested. So I ordered a whole bunch of scents and we are testing them throughout the entire Animal Crossings thing. Yes. Now for this particular soap, we are doing Coco, who is a really creepy looking bunny. And it's creepy. She's creepy looking in that she has no expression in her face. She has just two round black dots for circle for eyes and two round and one round for her mouth. And it, her expression never changes. And it's wild. Like first time I saw her, I'm like, wait, what are you? What's happening here? Is this becoming like a horror story type? Whatever. And this was not the rabbit that I was originally going to do for the Animal Crossing thing. Kind of got changed on the fly for a lot of different reasons. But Coco, whose head is supposed to be like a coconut, is going to be scented with the Cucumber Melon from Midwest Fragrance Company, which is wild. Now, out of the, out of the bottle, first things first. That cucumber melon is so strong. It's so clean. It is a dead on dupe for Bath and Body Works. It's probably the best cucumber melon that I've ever smelt. And that includes Bath and Body Works. For me personally, I am not a cucumber melon fan, but for those of you who are, this one hits. It's, it's good. And so let's go to the video and you can see the weird stuff that I decided to do for the ears and the, you know, there. Okay, next up is Coco, who is a rabbit, and we are going to do some weird shit today. And that weird shit is called, I am taking a placemat and wrapping it up with some hair ties, and then I'm going to tape it real big. Now, today was such a weird day for me with tape, because I had no shipping tape at all. I had, I ran out of shipping tape while I was filling my orders. And so I was using regular cello tape for actual putting the labels on the packages to be sent out. But also I had to use it for this. So it's big weird. I ended up using a lot of tape today. 
But you know, I was out of shipping tape. And so I just had to do this. If you wanted to do something weird with placemats, you could do so. But it's probably easier to go ahead and use regular shipping tape and not, you know, just scotch tape. So the reason that I'm doing this is because I wanted to make Coco as a rabbit in Animal Crossing, right? And I wanted to make her ears out of cold process as well because I wanted to really make sure that her ears matched her face. And so I'm using the same batch of cold process to do her ears and her, her face. And so that's what the what Coco looks like. Now, Coco in Animal Crossing is one of the very weird characters in that her face never changes with expressions and stuff. Her eyes don't really get smaller or her mouth doesn't. It, she just always has this vacant looking expression. And we are going to work with red rum for the color of her, her body. And the scent that we're using from Midwest Fragrance is cucumber and melon which sounds weird because it is assumed that Coco has a coconut head and has nothing going on upstairs, right? And so I should have used coconut, but I saw cucumber and melon on the Midwest Fragrance Company's website and I had just been having a conversation with someone about how awful that scent was from the 90s and then decided that I wanted to smell it again. And it's still a lot. I mean... If you like cucumber melon, it is a dead ass dupe of Bath and Body Works. So that's great. And it is so, so, so strong. Oh, and I did hit emulsion there also. That's why I gave a little thumbs up. But I wanted to mix it a little bit more because I do want this a little bit thicker just in case I didn't properly wrap up those little ear things. So a thin batter would definitely, you know, fallout of the sides and I didn't want any seepage so but yeah so again the cucumber melon it's really really good and very very potent everything that I am noticing from Midwest their scents are so damn strong like it is ridiculous and so if you're really into cucumber melon yeah this is totally the scent for you me personally I am not into cucumber melon and so I am not a fan of this. However, I know that it's going to be very, very popular in the line because I am in the minority as far as not liking cucumber and melon. Now, to get the speckles that Coco has on her body, on her face, I decided to use coffee, which is also something very weird to pair with cucumber and melon and a character whose name is Coco and assumed to have a coconut head. But I think that all works for her because she's very, very weird. She freaks me out. When I first saw her in Animal Crossing, I started to go, okay, so is this like a horror game? Are we taking a really weird dark turn? Because you look like an animal that's going to, you know, come into my house in the middle of the night and, you know, put like a, a spider in my ear or something like she's pretty creepy now in order to get this because I didn't quite have the right mold size for this pour because I'm doing it it's a two-part pour for this I'm going to be making the internal you know pour of this the circle as well as the ears and then I will put those into a log mold and pour around it so the head and the ears are sort of inside like a regular rectangular soap just, you know, for funsies. And so for that, I used two liners of a, of a brambleberry cylindrical mold to maybe take the, just the, oh, sh I, that just happened. I, I'm a disaster. The thing is with the brambleberry molds, they come apart really easily. And I'm used to working with PVC, which definitely never comes apart when you pull it like that. So I guess that's my fault, my reasoning, my whatever. Anyway, I put the two liners in to hopefully decrease the diameter just a little bit to make it easier to get into my 
regular log mold. So this is my thinking. Now, this did get very thick and it has nothing whatsoever to do with the scent. First, I did mix it, you know, a little bit more. And then when you put clay into soap batter, obviously it starts getting thick fast. But also this particular, like right after I had hit trace with all of this, I had to go help out a customer. And so the batter itself was sitting for about 10 minutes before I did anything with it anyway. So there's that. But the scent itself, excuse me, sorry. The scent itself is so, so strong. Like so strong. I am sitting here right now, like smelling it. It's, it's on my hands, which is wild to me because I was wearing gloves. That is how potent this scent is. And that is something that I have noticed just across the board for all of these Midwest scents so far. Like they, they are strong. And that's great. That's great for soaps. That's great for candles. That ultimately means you can A, use the same amount and have really, really potent bars, or two, use less and have your regular, you know, potency of bars. Either way, like whatever you want to do. Point is, it's cool. So I will not be putting either one of these into the oven for CPOP or gel. I'm just gonna let them set out overnight and then I will pull them out of the molds, you know, tomorrow and put them into the log mold for the next step of the process. But for now, you know, this is, is done and it's all a thing and it smells very strange. But, you know, I mean, it smells good. Again, it's a great smell if you're into cucumber melon. I'm just not. Let's go check out the other part. Okay, so it's day two and we are taking apart these little thing things here. And my hope was that it would just slide out. And I think I could have made it do so if I had put these in the freezer. And then I wouldn't have had to take apart these placemats that I used to create, you know, the ear thing. But, you know, I, I didn't put it in the freezer and I didn't have time. And so unfortunately I'm having to rip off all of that scotch tape that I put on it, you know, initially. And that really does suck because the soap apprentice, when she saw them, she's like, keep them, keep them. I want to use them for something. And so I was like, okay. And then what the pieces are still there, but now we're going to have to put it back together in some sort of teardrop. Oh, that's what it was. She wanted to do a, a fake teardrop because you could achieve a perfect teardrop in a soap with this. And so those are gonna be the years that totally worked out. It's so fun finding weird things to use for soap molds and all of the jazz, isn't it? I, it's one of my most favorite parts of the job. Now, the red rum I used in a very light amount because cocoa is not a very dark character. Oh, hey, look. That's gonna be perfect. That's awesome. So I don't exactly know the full potentiality of that brown, that reddish brown called red rum in this particular soap. So that's a bummer. If you've worked with red rum and have a picture like up on Insta or something, tag me in it so I can see what it looks like, you know, in soap form. That would be super cool. Now for the outside of this, I'm just mixing up like a little one pound batch. I think it's around one and a half pounds total weight when it's all said and done to pour again around the, the face and the ears and all of the jazz. And I am using mermaid blue from Brambleberry for this. And I have no real rhyme or reason as to why I wanted to go blue. I was just in a blue mood. And so there's that, but that was, that was my logic behind all of it. And of course, clay goes into it because clay goes into everything that I do. And I do want this batter to stay reasonably thin throughout this, right? Because I'm going to be putting a circle into a rectangle and in the pushing down of the circle, I want to displace the batter, the soap batter, the blue batter to ensure that we don't have any big pockets air pockets that we have to clean up afterwards. And so I did just soap this to an emulsion to, you know, do the things. And that's it. That was the whole reasoning. I wasn't even supposed to do this rabbit, by the way. This rabbit was supposed to be something else entirely. I, it was supposed to be a rabbit. 
I think it was one of the superhero rabbits. Yeah. The yellow one that wears the red superhero cape thing. And then she has like a mask on. She looks a lot like, I don't know, Elastigirl almost. Very adorable. I think her name is Miri. Pretty sure. And that was what Soap and Clay Kidlet number two had picked. She wanted to do that rabbit. And then she randomly came to me as I was prepping the thing for the ears. And she said, no, no, no. Instead of doing that one, I want you to do Coco. And I'm like, well, okay, whatever you want, you got. But I had already picked out that cucumber melon because I thought that would be great for Mary or whatever her name was, the little superhero rabbit. And it was already there. And so that's another reason why this bar is not scented with coconut. But ultimately, I figured that worked. Because again, going back to the aforementioned, Coco is weird. It fits that this whole bar is super weird. Also, the smell of the coffee mixed with the cucumber melon, it's really, really interesting. and actually makes me like this cucumber melon a lot more. And again, again, I am not saying that the scent is bad because the scent is great. I just don't like cucumber melon. Just making sure that that's very, very clear. I am not shit talking Midwest fragrance. It's a delightful smell. It's a dead ass dupe of Bath and Body Works, but it is not, I don't like cucumber melon. Let's check out this cut. Okay, and on to the cut. And I did not put this in the oven for C pop or gel, but it sure looks smooth and shiny like I had done so, doesn't it? Very, very beautiful for sure. And I'm a little concerned about using the cutter because I have those Melton Pore embeds for her. Oh, come on. That is adorable. Look at that. That is so cool. But yeah, those Melton Pore embeds in the middle for her eyes and mouth. I was a little concerned about that, but you know, it didn't break my cutter. That is so cute. That totally works. That's that's her head. That's Coco. That is Coco. That's amazing. That is Coco and all of her creepy weirdness. Now, if you're wondering how this scent holds up after saponification, my God, it holds up like nobody's business. This is so, so strong. It is ridiculous. And my bars are still very, very soft, but there is no reason to assume that this scent is going to fade at all. This is so strong. I, it's strong out of bottle. It is strong, you know, 12 hours after pour. And in the case of the middle piece, what the shit happened there? What? Okay, make this make sense. Seriously, make this make sense. I put in three cylinders into a cylindrical. And at the top of that soap, for the, the first, the core, you clearly saw, I mean, you just saw three, four perfectly lined up eyes and mouths. Literally, how did that happen? At the top, they were perfectly spaced, like perfectly spaced. And as you got further down to the bottom of the how? How? Okay. I, I don't get it, but I am going to fix it. So I'm going to take the end of a spoon and some activated charcoal. And so now she has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And it's still fine. But that is big wild. I have no idea. My brain is not processing how that could possibly happen. But look, I fixed it. It's still cocoa. She has the head of a coconut. There is coffee grounds in this. It smells of cucumber melon. She's weird. The bar is weird. The placement of the eyes ended up being weird. And it's all completely perfect because cocoa's super weird. And that's day 104, Animal Crossing. Yeah, so for a weird bunny that's supposed to be modeled after a coconut that smells of cucumber melon, and that whole process was so weird with the placemats and all the, it totally works, it's totally fitting, and it's totally perfect. And um, this was a wild one. 
for sure. That scent stuck through saponification like nobody's business. I, again, not a cucumber melon fan, but it's strong. It's good. So if you are into cucumber melon, this is a great option for sure. You can find this again at Midwest Fragrance Company and you can use a coupon code that they got for us, for you, on your next order and that would be epic. You can use Soap and Clay 10 for 10% off of your next order and that's S-O-A-P ampersand C-L-A-Y 10. It's below and you can get a deal. And so that would be epic. Go, go show this new company some love. Yes. I uh, really hope you guys had fun today. I had a blast making this soap and always happy to share it with you. So thank you for being my sudsers, for being subscribed, for being a human in existence, all of the things. I'm out of here for two day. I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.